Hello guys, how are you? This is a build of the 148 FA 18A Super Hornet from Italy. Uh, well, not an easy kit, but I mean, all Italy kits are, they just need a little bit of a work to be at that uh, level if you want to bring it up a bit. Um, I enjoyed building this one. Uh, the scheme was very interesting. Uh, it helped me a lot uh, on this state of mind that I am right now. And I use for the first time Mission Models uh, premium paints. I wanted to test these paints for a long time. Uh, so now I got to do it. Um, let's see for ahead how they performed. But I really enjoyed these. Um, had to adapt a bit, um, but I really enjoyed these. And these are some of the paints needed to build this bird. So I started on the usual place, the cockpit, and let's see if you enjoy this video as much as I enjoyed build this F-18E Super Hornet. So as you can see, I start reading carefully the instructions, planning ahead, and started work on the cockpit. Um, the one thing, I found this cockpit too simplistic. I, I don't want to be a, a critic of Italy. Um, it's not my intention to do that, but on a 148 scale on a kit like this, you expect a bit more from Italy and from a cockpit. As you know, the cockpit is one of the first things that when we see a kit, we tend to look at, to see the detail. We want to see the buttons, all the knobs and the levers, we, we want to see it all. And to have three decals to just substitute detail, not good. To have almost inexistent detail of seat belts embedded on the pilot seat, not good at all. And to have small to none detail on the pilot seat and a big ejector pin mark on the headrest not good not good i'm not usually a critic of companies i'm i'm i'm, I'm not being critic but this is something that needs to be uh, attended by a company that wants to uh, ensure its place on the market but well I made some extra seat belts and you will see how I painted the best I could um, and I applied the decals. There was nothing else more than I could do and except buying an extra one and I wanted to build this strictly out of the box. I covered that ejector pin mark on the pilot seat headrest uh, using Mr. Dissolved Pudding.
a little bit of dry brush just to uh, pop up a little bit the details, the few details on the pilot seat. I am sorry, uh, sometimes the image is not clear and I know this is because the white background but I prefer a white background because my light is not the best my light conditions are not the best I am no Steven Spielberg um, I like to edit these videos but sometimes the image is not clear enough for that I am sorry And this is how I made some seat belts using some kitchen metal foil and some uh, kabuki tape. Very simple, but at least it was better than the detail that came on the pilot seat, which was practically none. And now the cockpit decals. As you can see, three decals for uh, simulate all detail on the cockpit. See, too simple. For a 148, F18, F16, whatever, F18, in this case, um, the detail is too simple, too simple. And I'm not being a critic, you can see for yourselves.
And with the cockpit done, I advanced to the main fuselage. Uh, just one side note here. I had to sand and to put the all uh, fit contact points. I have to sand and to put the all air intakes. I have to sand the interior of the air intakes because um, there are parts that are uh, flat and all straightened up, you know. Um, and this was a constant action on this kit. I am not putting it down. What I am trying to say is, if you want to do an F-18E Super Hornet, uh, by this company you have indeed to put some effort into it. trying to say is that I don't mind work on a kit like this I, I really don't um, I really could use that kind of mental uh, concentration right now I needed it um, and because of that this kit helped me a lot what I'm trying to say is those of you that try to find that are trying to find a, a an easy build please don't uh, but then again all Italeri kits are like this. Um, this kit didn't fit actually bad, it, by the contrary. It fitted well, but the contact lines, the points were, were not perfect as some other companies that you know. I don't like to compare kits, uh, companies. Each one is as it is. But on this Italeri kit, you need a bit uh, work because uh, you have to compensate for uh, certain um, let's say things on the mold This is the Bart Sharp 186 Airbrush. Uh, I like it. It's reliable, tough, simple, and easy to operate, and um, it's trustworthy. Uh, I had a cloth problem, a clock, uh, it clocked on me, but uh, when I cleaned it up, I saw that uh, it was me who messed it up. Um, I didn't clean it properly and after a few minutes cleaning it, it just turned out great. I continued and then changed to the Bart Sharp 180 uh, just because I haven't uh, tested that for a while and both performed very well. Right here I can tell you I am not using yet mission model paints. Uh, the paints haven't arrived yet and they just arrived just in time for me to start painting the, the, the paint scheme of the jet, which I appreciate it greatly. 
Um, I want to thank Mission Models for sending me these. Um, thank you guys. I wanted to test Mission Model paints for a long, long time. And now I get to do it. Um, I really enjoyed it. But more ahead, you can see for yourselves the results. Just um, another thing, on the instructions, they say that the landing gear, bay and bay doors must be black matte. Um, that's a mistake. All Navy landing gear, bay doors are white uh, because it's easier to check for oil spills or hydraulic spills. Actually, I was going to insist on that mistake and when I pointed to Jez Coleman uh, this, he told me why not white and I rechecked it again, he sent me a picture and yes, all white. So guys, be careful with this, okay? It's not black, it's white and these are the instructions, guys. This riveting that I'm um, replacing here because when I'm when I sanded, I lost panel lines and riveting comes with the, the kit. Okay, I didn't add it, no riveting at all. I do believe that on jets, riveting must be as truthful as possible because jets have a special kind of rivets, as you know. So you don't want to go mess around and uh, making rivets all the way. Um, I chose to keep the ones that the kit bring. And here I thought, why exactly 8.6 millimeters? But okay, instructions say 8.6 millimeters, so 8.6 millimeters it is.
And this would be the part where I usually raise my glass with a scotch and say cheers, guys. But right now, well, medication has these things. Um, you have to respect it. So coffee it is. here you have to be really careful when using your putty. You see, some lines are supposed to be there. So if you cover them all up, you won't have a panel line. Um, I actually checked for uh, references and this line and more, much more uh, panel lines that I used putty in, they existed. So difficult, it, it's easier sometimes to cover it all up rather than to find that point where you, the line still exists, but it's not a gap, you see? And that was some bit of a problem for me, but well, it's done. One thing very positive on this kit, 148 canopy didn't bring the famous seam line in the middle. Who those? Mission model paints just arrived in the nick of time. Uh, I started immediately painting this one, applying the gray primer. This time I will be doing a gray base primer instead of a black base. 
and using for the first time these primers. So applying this primer implies that you use with the primer uh, a thinner, its uh, own thinner. I used, as you know, always a cup, it's always different. And you turn the bottle, create vacuum, and we are going to apply three parts of primer to one of thinner, being th three parts, 30 drops, or 31, one or two for good measure, no problem at all. And then we apply 6% of thinner, in this case, six drops of thinner. Each part, 10 drops, okay, and 6% of thinner. It's concentrated, then you mix it all up, and I found out that between 15 to 18 psi, it's perfect. I actually started by using a bigger pressure and I ran out of primer, but that was my mistake, okay? So I really enjoyed the way these just applied on the surface of the model, covered, they're very opaque, and please note, I was using it very high because I didn't uh, saw my pressure and that was a mistake. I almost fucked up, I almost messed it up, but I enjoyed it thoroughly. And I'm assembling my Bard Sharp paint booth. As you can see, my pressure here, I admit it, it's a bit too high, as you can see, and even so, the Bar Sharp paint booth is removing the chemicals, but you can see it, it's so intense that you can see the strength that the paint hits the pieces. Don't do it, don't do it as I am, was doing it. Uh, I didn't check the, the pressure again. Between 15 to 18 psi, 10 parts of um, primer and 6% of thinner and it goes perfectly, apply it smoothly. Even so, I do believe that I didn't got lucky, it was a quality of mission models, paints and primer, so be careful, okay? Always check the pressure. And now I'm pre-shading. I'm following each and every panel line.
just using mask all to uh, protect uh, certain small details, some clear parts, uh, the tip of the missiles, the optical parts, you know, I use mask all exactly for that. As you can see, I didn't, um, the paint is not completely cured. As you know, paints tend to have its time to cure. And I am pulling um, Tamiya masking tape out of it. So the paints are very resilient. They cover very well. Uh, they're very soft and they smooth the surface. I like it. I'm just, uh, Correcting a bit of uh, some droplets, some gray droplets went underneath the um, masking tape, you know, and the sponge. So I'm just making that better. Uh, and I am taking the opportunity also to paint the landing uh, gear doors and landing gear uh, bay.
And now let's protect all this uh, paint work with clear 3 um, varnish, clear varnish with um, Mr. Leveling, Mr. Color Leveling Thinner and protect all paintwork done, done so far. No step stencils and all that were just a nightmare to put in, but in the end, they, as you know, they all add to a better look on this kit. Now I know why exactly 8.6 millimeters. It's exactly the size of this deco. And now I started to give several uh, layers, coats of uh, weathering, starting with this Flory model wash, clay-based wash, it's not aggressive towards the painting nor the clear uh, coat, an enamel pin wash, an AK pin wash, which is also enamel but in a different kind of way, uh, in a different color. I tried to weather this uh, jet a bit not being too much okay because this one is kept 
not in the pristine way I could have had a bit of a hydraulic fluid from the back of the landing gear, uh, landing gear sorry, bay uh, on the airflow but I didn't do it okay I kept this as simple as I could I wanted to do some salt didn't do it I have another 148 F18 and 148 F14 here that I want to test that Just making some natural streaking grime with that sponge. And now some uh, oil washes from uh, Modelaski Sviet on this case black brown and uh, an oil wash for um, winter camouflage in white for the landing gear bay. I just love these washes, they're oil based, very thin, they can be used as a filter, as an oil wash, they are very versatile, they make the difference. Just because I was having fun, an enamel homemade, let's call it wash, um, with equal parts of matte enamel, umbral matte 82, um, matte 154, and black gloss 21. Uh, this makes it look a bit oil, greasy, you know, it helps. It gives it that kind of a hydraulic fluid texture underneath.
I just wanted to take this uh, opportunity to thank Mission Model Paint. I was surprised. Um, I saw on some videos on YouTube here that they were good, but I didn't know how much good they were. Great product. Thank you. I will definitely use these uh, much more at the time. And uh, I wanted to thank Mission Malls for sending me these paints. And um, after all doing this, uh, I still forgot to uh, drill uh, the MRAMs, the missiles on the back, just two, so I will do that. Uh, some small details here and there, but in the end I was satisfied with all the work put in on this. And after a few touch-ups and uh, a matte coat to seal it all in, all this work, I finally gave, I finished this 148 Detallery F18 E Hornet, Super Hornet. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this one. It's a bit longer than used to, but uh, it, was a, it was a bit of work, uh, it needed a lot of love. And I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. As always, uh, and I have to say, I have only five, but I think I like to think it's the best five Patreons I have. Uh, support me on Patreon, I'm there just to keep my hobby a bit more sustainable. Subscribe if you like this video, click on the icon, on the bell icon, okay? And as always, guys, as always, uh, keep modeling, guys, keep modeling, always. Always with a smile, even when you just don't want to. Cheers, guys.